Hi everybody. Welcome to our abbreviated worship service online from Arondequoit Presbyterian Church. Today we're going to be taking a look at what are sometimes called the gifts of the Spirit. There are in the New Testament um, different lists of those and today we are looking at the list that comes to us from the letter to the Galatians. And we're also going to be having a reading from the Gospel according to Luke. But really, we're, we're going to be looking at nature, um, our spiritual nature, and what it means to be human nature. What do we mean by that? To settle us into where we are, I invite you to think about our centering question in a minute and pause your video. If you're worshiping with someone, you might want to discuss the question. If you're worshiping alone, maybe just think about your answer or journal a bit. And um, when you're ready, release the pause button and we'll continue with worship, okay? Now, when we were children, how we interacted with our parents or, or with other adults caring for us really helped to shape how we would later come to think about God or whatever term you use for the power that's greater than, than you in the world. Children who were brought up with distant parents or, or adult figures who judged them and, and didn't tend to be very warm and, and open, they tend to relate first to a God who is distant and who judges and is not really relatable. And likewise, um, children who were brought up with gentle and loving authority figures they tend to relate to a God with those characteristics. Then as we age and mature, we either deepen the image that we had or we adopt a different way of relating to God altogether that speaks to our needs. So our centering question for today is this. Was this pattern of relating to God mirroring your relationship with adults in your life? Was that true for you? And did that change over time as you matured? Ready? Pause. Paul's letter to the Galatians outlines for us how to be anchored in the Spirit as we go through our everyday life. Listen for the Word of God from the fifth chapter, verses 13 to 25, as found in the Good News translation of Scripture. As for you, my friends, you were called to be free. But do not let this freedom become an excuse for letting your physical desires control you. Instead, let love make you serve one another. For the whole law is summed up in one commandment, love your neighbor as you love yourself. But if you act like wild animals, hurting and harming each other, then watch out or you will completely destroy one another. What I say is this, let the spirit direct your lives and you will not satisfy the desires of the human nature for what our human nature wants is opposed to what the Spirit wants, and what the Spirit wants is opposed to what our human nature wants. These two are enemies, and this means that you cannot do what you want to do. If the Spirit leads you, then you are not subject to the law. What human nature does is quite plain. It shows itself in indecent actions, in worship of idols and witchcraft, People become enemies and they fight. They become jealous, angry, and ambitious. They separate into parties and groups. They are envious. They get drunk, have orgies, and do other things like these. I warn you now, as I have before, those who do these things will not possess the kingdom of God. But the Spirit produces love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as these, and those who belong to Christ Jesus have put to death their human nature with all its passions and desires. The Spirit has given us life 
and it must also, must also control our lives. Here ends our first reading. Our second reading today comes to us, as I mentioned earlier, from the Gospel according to Luke, and we're looking at the Good News Translation, chapter 9, verses 57 to 62. And it opens with Jesus and his followers walking along, and he's teaching them as he often does when they're en route to someplace else. Listen for the word of God. As they went on their way, a man said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus said to him, Foxes have holes and birds have nests, but the Son of Humanity has no place to lie down and rest. He said to another person, Follow me. But that one said, Sir, first let me go back and bury my father. Jesus answered, Let the dead bury their own dead. You go and proclaim the kingdom of God. Someone else said, I will follow you, sir, but first let me go and say goodbye to my family. And Jesus said to them, Anyone who starts to plow and then keeps looking back is of no use for the kingdom of God. May God help us to understand these readings. Here end our readings for today. Thanks be to God. Let the Spirit control your life. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. There is no law against such things as these. And these words sound so simple, don't they? I mean, live as the spirit, not as a physical being. If we can live and embrace those things, we, they will be ours, love, joy, peace. And, and if you do, the, the gifts of the spirit will be yours, the letter says. They'll be ours, those things. And yet here we are in this world in this three-dimensional existence where we are contained inside these physical bodies that separate us from each other and that age and grow and change. Bodies that break down sometimes and get ill. Bodies that give out and die. I've always thought about this, actually, um, perhaps because my parents were older when I was born, and so I was always aware of their aging. But it's interesting to me. This reading does not say that we are not supposed to pay attention to our bodies, but it's our human nature that we are supposed to minimize as we embrace our spiritual nature. What we identify with matters. Is it the way of the world? Or is it the way of God? The physical, the spiritual. Kind of like what we talked about last week when we were looking at God's law versus human-made laws. And in the reading from Luke, the whole thing is a story to point out how we continue to come up with reasons to not put Jesus and our spiritual life at the top of the list. I have too much to do. What do you mean I'd have to study the Bible? I've been reading it all my life. I don't need a class to do that. Oh no, I couldn't possibly reach out to someone I didn't know. Me? That's just not what I'm like. I, I'm, I'm not like that. I, I can't talk about my faith. Those are all things that the human part of us would say, right? The spiritual part, though, can't wait to learn more, to share more, to live more with others who are anchored in the spirit as well. We are not human 
beings trying to live as spiritual lives. We're try we are spiritual beings being forced to live a human life. But human nature is an interesting thing to contemplate, isn't it? Think about what it means to be human. And it human nature seems to vary from one human to another. <clears throat> What is second nature to one person can be quite foreign to another. Just watch people in line to cash out at the grocery store, and you'll see what I mean. Some people are rude, others polite. Some are pushy, others let people ahead. Some people are generous and even pay for others' groceries, as we heard about in one of our acts of faith last week. Others would never do that, even if they were in a position to. This might seem like a leap with what I'm going to say, but I'll tie it in. Sin is a word that gets a lot of attention in Christianity. And if you try to learn about it, you'll find as many different definitions for it as you will people trying to define it. But over the years, I've come to think of sin as just plain old human nature. We all sin and fall short of the glory of God, as Paul says, but because because we we all give in to human nature, I think. Isn't that true? You know, we give in to lust or anger when we no longer recognize the spark of divinity in others or or we try to overpower them with our strength or our position or our thoughts when we no longer respect them as being children of God. We do things that most people would consider to be sinful, like having an affair or killing someone or stealing from them or oppressing them. And yet I could make an argument that those things are really just human nature. The examples that Luke gives us are pretty practical, aren't they? I can't come with you right now, Jesus, because I have to go bury my father or say my goodbyes to my family or in some way exercise my responsibility to others. And that's just what he's getting at, I think. We have to choose to look at things differently, to prioritize things differently. We have to first be aware of the fact that we are choosing how to see the world and then choose to be anchored, not in the values of this life and the things around us, but in the values of the spirit. Things like love and justice, fairness, kindness, and compassion, standing up for those who can't stand up for themselves, being the voice of the voiceless, forgiving others, but not being weak in the face of evil, those are all things that Jesus taught us. Those are the values that he lived. Those are the things that we must put first if we are to be anchored in the Spirit. And what happens to us when we are anchored in the Spirit? Ah. That's when we experience the gifts of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, goodness, kindness, faithfulness, humility, self-control. And when we experience those things, we are more able to exhibit those things. Hard to be peaceful if we're not at peace. When we exhibit those things, then others experience them too. If I am at peace, you feel the peace as well. And when we keep doing that, one person at a time, well then, we change the world. All because we continue moment by moment, thought by thought, to prioritize spirit nature over human nature. We choose it. Does it mean we will never stray and get temporarily unmoored? Of course not. 
But I think of being anchored in the spirit. <clears throat> I have this image. See if it helps. I think of being anchored in the spirit like being one of those permanent anchor buoys in, in the Great Lakes or an ocean. <clears throat> and the buoy is always there, right? It's always there. It's anchored. It's firm. It's connected. And then sometimes in the middle of the storm, you know, it gets dragged down below the waves, sometimes pretty far. But always, always it resurfaces. That's the spirit. The spirit rises and breaks through everything else around us. We are lifted up. If we are not anchored, <clears throat> if we're not anchored down there, then the waves come and sweep the boy away. Although it's not just for boys, it's also for gulls. Get it? <laughs> boys and gulls? Boys and girls? Sorry. <clears throat> I couldn't resist. But seriously, if we're not anchored in the spirit, we're just floating with the currents of the prevailing winds of society. And we're drowning in whatever, whatever has become culturally normative. Like people who are so close to power that they are led one little step at a time away from what they value until they are so far away from who they were or who they thought they were. They can't even see that place anymore. And they've been swept into a life and values filled with falsehoods and, and they think it's all good. And they don't even realize they've become unmoored. They've lost their perspective. Those who are anchored, well, they can only go so far before they're brought back to the surface and they're aligned again. They weather the storms instead of being swamped by them. So where are you going to tether your spirit? Where are you going to anchor your life? In the ways of the world, in human nature? Or in the ways of the spirit, spiritual nature? Well, I'd say maybe it would be a good idea if we follow that J guy. Follow Jesus. He'll keep us anchored in the spirit. Amen. Let's come together in prayer, shall we? Oh, Holy One, you who watch over us and guard us and protect us, both physically and spiritually. You know what it's like to have to deal with this duality of our life because you were here, Jesus. You embodied the divine and, and the sacred and the spiritual and the holy while living as a human being, feeling all the things that we feel. You know our frustrations and our fears. You know what we're going through in this world where right now there just seems to be a preponderance of chaos and nothing seems to be right. <laughs> or if we find those things that are right, we just want to encapsulate them and keep them close to us and keep them safe. And sometimes we have trouble sharing the good things. And yet your spirit is so generous. You teach us how to give. And those gifts of the Spirit that, that Paul wrote about, <clears throat> we long for those. Help us to prioritize our lives so that we put your values first. Make us more aware of the moments that you give us those gifts of the Spirit so that we can live fully into them and share them with others. 
in the moments when we become unmoored and we're starting to flow, float away, send your spirit, the great spirit, the strong spirit, to pull us back and re-anchor us in you. We know you are always there willing to do that, but we also recognize it's, it's our choice to invite you into our lives to do that. Help us remember to invite you in. Comfort those who are afflicted. Afflict those of us who are comfortable. Help us to reprioritize, because in that reprioritizing our lives, we become anchored in your spirit. For we want to be more like you, Jesus. You have called us to be your ambassadors in the world. You have given us everything that we need in order to do that through our baptism. And so it is that we offer ourselves to you. And that we pray as you have taught your people to pray, using the words of our Mennonite brothers and sisters. Blessed one, our source and support, holy is your name. May your love be enacted in the world. May your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us in the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For all that we do in your love and all that your love brings to birth and the fullness of love that will be are yours now and forever. Amen. So as we wrap up our time of worship, let's take with us the gifts that the Spirit offers to us. Love and joy, and peace and patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, humility, and self-control. As we practice those, we become anchored more in the spirit nature and less in our human nature, which is a good thing. Anchored in Jesus and in his values as opposed to the values of our world. You know, I have this feeling that we need to remember that as we transform our spirit, we transform our world. But it all starts with us choosing to be tethered to these values. And if and when we float away, reconnecting each time. It's our choice. Let us go with God, walk with Jesus, and live in the Spirit. And let the people say, Amen. I hope you have a great week this week. You know, anytime you want to be connected during the week, I do a series of daily Monday through Friday short between six and 13 minute um, sessions called prayerful pause with the pastor and those can be found on YouTube if you search for South Church Rochester go to South Church Rochester and click on prayerful pause or you can find this service in a, a fuller form with more things added music and, and so forth but for right now, have a great day, everybody. God bless. Take care. And bye for now. I look forward to seeing you next time.